Kurno versus Bertrand. So now we're going to look at uh, how the two are little different from each other. How Kurno and Bertrand, they are little different from each other. So you started with the perfect competition, you moved on to monopoly, then you moved on to oligopoly. So in monopoly, was it, what is it that we have seen that the monopolist has a choice? He can set the price or he can set the quantity. In a perfectly competitive market, the person, uh, the firm doesn't have a choice. I mean, price is given to it. But he can sell whatever amount of quantity he wants to sell at the going market price. In Monopoly, he can set the price. He can think, okay, I want to get this price. What is the quantity I'll be selling? Or I want to sell this quantity. What is the price I want to charge? Right. But when you move from monopoly to the price competition, then you find that the, that the competition become very, very stiff. Price competition is extremely stiff. So let me write one point. Let me write a point that in monopoly, you have a choice of price of setting a price or a quantity. But when you move from monopoly to a Bertrand case, then the competition become very, very stiff. I'll tell you why. So in Monopoly, we find that the outcome is same. whether we set price or quantity, whether we set price or quantity. But when you move from monopoly to the burden price competition, you find that the, that the competition becomes extremely stiff, right? So price competition, is extremely tough, right? Price competition is extremely tough. And why are we saying so? Well, you start with an equal price. So your firm is there and my firm is there. And we start with an equal price and we are selling a completely homogeneous product. And you set the price a little lower than the market, then the entire market will start moving towards you, right? Then the entire market will start moving towards you. And there is a benefit from undercutting. So you are undercutting me and there is a benefit which is going to you, right? So just write this, moving. From perfect, uh, moving from price competition in Bertrand to quantity competition in Kurno we find that market outcome changes dramatically, right? You start with an equal price and you reduce the price just a little bit. Then the entire market will start moving towards you, right? So there is a benefit from undercutting, which you're going to get.
starting from equal price. A small decrease in firm one's price <clears throat> allows it to get the entire market share. Allows it to get the entire market share, right? So there is a there is a benefit from undercutting, which you, which you're going to get from the price competition, but the quantity competition is softer. Quantity competition is softer, right? Now, what will happen is that you start with a position where you and I were producing the same quantity. And then you unilaterally increase your quantity, right? Then it will have a marginal effect on the revenue of the other competitor, right? So, so uh, firms, you know what? They have sort of less incentive to, to overproduce each other uh, with competitive with quantity competition, then, then to undercut under the price competition. Listen to the line once again. You and I are two firms <clears throat> and we were playing Kurno. You start thinking that I will unilaterally increase my quantity. You may, right? So it will decrease the price, market price a little bit. So it is going to hurt a little bit both of us. Right, but it won't it won't hurt me that much in case uh, vis a vis the case where we were both competing in prices, because there in case if you have reduced the price, the entire market would have gone towards you. And one very important thing is that in case of the Kurno competition, firms they have a little incentive to overproduce, because by overproducing, what will happen that the when you are overproducing, the total total quantity supplied is increasing. Market price is going to fall. It is going to hurt you also a little bit, but you may take you may make over by an increased sales. It won't affect me also much. So there is a small marginal effect. But in case of price competition, there is a lot of incentive for you to undercut me, right? So let me write this point starting. <clears throat> from equal quantity a small increase in one firm's quantity Has only the marginal effect on the revenue of other firms on the revenue of other firms. Right, or the revenue that other firms receive uh, from their existing output. Right. <clears throat> this is an important line which I'm taking exactly from Nicholson. Firms have less incentive to overproduce in the Kurno competition. Right. 
then to undercut each other with price competition right with price competition hmm. Achha, there is a realistic side to both uh, uh kurno as well as bertrand there is a realistic assumption or realistic implication for both kurno as well as uh, as well as uh, bertrand if you look at kurno you will find this that as more and more firms will enter the market the market price will tend towards the perfectly competitive situation right because more and more firms will be producing more and more quantity supply is going to increase price is going to price is going to fall right so under kurno as the number of firms increase right as the number of firms increase the market outcome tend towards perfect competition. How is this coming in the comparison of Kurno and Burton? It is because in case of Bertrand, the moment we had, we were two firms, you and I, and you decrease the price a little bit. Then the market outcome suddenly reaches to perfect competition. It doesn't require as many number of firms because the moment the market outcome has reached perfect competition, then even if number of firms are going to come, even if more number of firms are going to come, it is not going to affect much, right? It is not going to affect much because the outcome is now perfect competition. You, you're getting the two different, you're getting the difference bit up. In Kurno, slowly market outcome will reach towards perfect competition as the number of firms are increasing. In Bertrand, the moment you have undercut me, the market outcome suddenly reaches for a competition, right? That's what we have seen, the Bertrand Nash equilibrium, right? While in Bertrand, There is a discontinuous jump right from monopoly to perfect competition. I mean. It is basically oligopoly to perfect competition. <clears throat> right. If even if just two firms center, there's this additional uh, entry uh, beyond that point. For example, you have already undercut me. Market has moved towards perfect competition, com perfectly competitive outcome. If now the number of firms are going to increase, it won't have much effect, right? So it is, it has no additional effect on the market outcome, right? If just two firms enter,
an additional entry beyond two has no additional effect. Has no additional effect on the market outcome. Right, beta. Right. So, but in the real world, I mean, of course, this is a real implication. But in the real world, don't you think that um, you you see firms telling you the prices, not the quantities? No. I mean, you see that restaurants are telling you, uh, we are selling this at this price, we're selling it at that price, instead of telling you, we are selling uh, two units, we are selling three units, not like that, right? Or even if they are selling two units, three units, they'll be telling you two units at this price or three units at this price. So on, on one hand, the implication for the cool note seems realistic, but on the other hand, the Burton price competition looks realistic assumption because that's what we see all around. Huh? Right, so this is what I wanted to do in this recording, beta. Thank you.